Alrighty guys, it's Captain Kyle here with Seas Live, Reduce Impact, and uh, we're here at Carrillo Isle Marina, and we're just chatting with just for our viewers, Kate, uh, if you could introduce yourself, your first and last name, and uh, what do you do for a living? Hi everyone, my name is Kate Pearson. Um, I'm delighted to work with Safe Harbor Marinas as their VP of Business Development West. Um, Safe Harbor Marinas is the largest owner and operator of marinas in the country. Um, we currently have 70 properties and we feel and have a strong foundation of, um, of giving back and making sure our waterways are better than the way we found them. I absolutely love everything you just said. We only manage about four or five different brands here. I could not imagine managing 70 different locations. That's insane. Um, I found this cool thing on the desk here and uh, I kind of tossed it in my pocket there. I was hoping you could tell our viewers a little about what this is. We all love this, and every time our captains see it, we, we actually stop sometimes and tell our guests on the way down to the boats like what this is, and people love hearing about it, so we can hear from it your It's very, very cool. I'm so glad you guys love it, as we do too. Um, so the Seabin Project is um, a couple of guys, a startup, who um, were boat builders wow. and surfers, and Australian as well, okay, cool. and um, living in the Mediterranean, and we're just fed up with the amount of plastic pollution that they were dealing with, both um, from a marina standpoint and from somebody who's recreating um, out in the oceans. So um, being very smart um, manufacturers that were actually boat builders, they decided to create some technology to, to make a difference. So that was the Seaman Project. Um, Safe Harbor Marinas is a global pilot partner and the, um, the first in the US, in fact, the first two landed here at Cabrillo, um, where we got to play with the technology, uh, make sure it was doing what it was supposed to be doing and optimizing pulling as much trash out of the water. Um, and we can, we can talk a little bit about the technology, but the coolest thing is it's not just, you know, the, the basic function of removing the trash. It's also a global educational outreach um, here in Southern California, we've partnered with the Girl Scouts. Um, the Girl so Scouts, the Girl really? Scouts, and they I, love I don't think this. we need to introduce that organization to the public. <laughs> uh, I'm sure some of you are munching on the cookies right now, still in the freezer. That's I got so some nice. Thin Mints hidden away. I do too. Shh, don't tell. Um, in here in um, San Diego and San Diego School District, we partnered with um, Silvergate Elementary. Awesome. Um, I'm actually substitute taught at that elementary school. I, I've taught their kids before. Okay, so you'll recognize. That our the parents make up. They're mariners, they're professional sailors, they're um, captains, they're boat builders. So they were all about this project. Um, and then Sea Scouts and various other groups up and down the coast as well. Just excuse me, I've got something in my mind here. Um, but the Sea Bin um, is a marvelous small unit. It's about so big. The size of maybe a, a, a five gallon bucket. Right, yeah, maybe even smaller. And it's, it's made from recycled plastic. It's actually made from recycled material. Recycled material. We're using something to clean up the oceans that's actually made from something that used to pollute the oceans. Isn't that's that cool. amazing? It's that full circle and what it does is it just creates a vacuum. I don't know how the magic works because that's their technology, <laughs> but it creates a vacuum and a, and a small low flowing current that pulls the plastic in. Here at Cabrillo, we're in a man-made basin without any natural flushing. Right. So all the trash used to accumulate down the end of my eye dock. So and that we used was to see it down there, right. pretty ugly muck in the water. Right, so not only does it pull plastic out, it pulls a lot of biological out as well, as well as oil and detergents. What's interesting is the biologicals that we're pulling out, kelp, um, you know, other bits of weed, um, anything that's sort of marine um, debris. And a lot of this is dead plant material on the surface of the water. Right, but there's microplastics attached to every single piece. So, really? what we do is we empty the sea bin three times a day. We actually sort and count what three we Three times, every three single times day. Yeah. You send your staff down, and we know the guys, yep. Tony, Ramon, and Joel. Uh -huh. and these and guys are going down and pulling it out. Pulling it out, and they're not only just pulling it out, and they're sorting through it. So, and then we're tallying what the pollution sources are. So, plastic bags, you know, since we put the sea bin in, the plastic bags have been banned in San Diego. We've right. seen tons of plastic bags to none literally really? in six months so they were since so, the law went in you've seen a big seen difference it. this it, is only a short amount of time right because they, they were so light these plastic bags that supermarkets were giving out they'd blow off very easily so they'd blow out down streams they'd blow off boats whatever sure. right 
um, and we were constantly pulling them out. We're not seeing any of it. Um, really interesting is we have CBINs in five locations in California, so we're able to compare what we're finding in the CBINs. Okay. Now, we've currently got a vessel up at your location in Ventura Isle Marina in Ventura Harbor, and every day I, I walk up the ramp to the to to go to my car. You visit with the sea bin. It, it's right there. Pay homage to the bin as it pulls out the plastic. The funny thing is, yeah, you, you say it like, it's funny, pay homage, people really do. Every person I've walked down to, to bring to the boat, to show them, my family members and friends, everyone stops right there at this sea bin. And you guys have a really cool plaque that explains the whole project. We did a little video on it last week, by the way. I did. We stopped with our cameras Thank and just a little you. promo so you can put it online. Um, and it's got a whole description of what you're doing. You can watch the trash actually come right off the surface of the water and go. I haven't seen a person new to the marina at Ventura Isle not stop oh, there and check out what it is. It's really satisfying just to watch it work. And not only that, in Ventura, it got the attention of Patagonia because you know how much they give and back. And they're based in Ventura. And awesome. they're based in Ventura. So they came down to watch it um, and to meet the sea bin and meet the, the founders of the sea bin. And they're also talking about developing um, a line of clothing from the plastics that the sea bin's pulling out. So. And Patagonia were the founders of the 1% for the Planet initiative that basically where business owners are, are making a pledge to give a portion of their proceeds to go back into environmental causes that actually take care of the earth we live on. Right. And Imagine. That is a amazing. conscious <laughs> business conscience. Um, it is Patagonia leads the way in, in, in all of that. Um, and you can tell by just how happy their staff are and you know some of the programming that they have for the kids and um, so we we were delighted with Ventura um, but back to what we see in Alameda Our Alameda um, Alameda the city of Alameda has a no plastic straw um, ban so you can't they don't sell plastic straws guess what we're not pulling out Plastic straws. Wow, that's awesome. Guess what we pull out here? A lot of plastic straws. Right. And so I'm sure you've seen our hashtag we have out, which is uh, hashtag straw free SD. We also have one hashtag straw free world. If you put your hashtag up like this, guys, just put your your two straws in the form of a little representation of a gravesite for a little piece of the earth that we kill. Uh, we're seeing a lot of traction in San Diego where people are actually jumping on board this and saying we'd like to be like the other small communities in California and get this useless plastic that's just a convenience use item right. just, just out of our world, right? Exactly. Um, and so the kids at Silvergate have adopted that. Awesome. So they're doing, you know, they, you know, we had a long conversation about it over Earth Day actually last Friday um, or Friday before last we were with the kids um, celebrating Earth Day a couple of days ahead of it and we talked about the little things that we can do every day to make, um, make a difference. So Seabin is in a big way is making a difference um, and their ultimate goal is not to have to need Seabins, which is lovely. Awesome. That I love that their goal is to go business. out of business. Yes, <laughs> because we won't need them and that really shows the spirit and soul of um, these great inventors and we're proud and, and honored to be a global pilot partner with them. Um, and we're delighted that these little sea bins here in San Diego just got so much attention and that people, you know, what you guys do, you're taking people who've not been sailing before and educating them about why we do what we do. It's such an important piece of, of the education to take them past the sea bin, but also just to get people recreating. I love that. I, I, mean, I love that you bring that up, Kate, because we did a, uh, an interview just a few days ago with a, a um, with a leader from a prominent uh, nonprofit foundation, and his main key when we asked him about what can people really do to help, I expected him to say reduce your single use plastic, um, start using reusable materials and containers than, than ones that are single use time. And instead, his very number one, before he went to those two items, but his number one was go outside, enjoy the outdoors, and remind yourself that nature exists, that we can be a part of it. I feel like that really inspires people. We it, love what we do. Well, it does inspire people. And, you know, I love what I do. I mean, I know how I feel. Well, you guys know more than anyone when you're out on the ocean. Even if you're just down in the marina, your shoulders drop, you breathe deeper. You, 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 you know, it makes put everything in perspective, right? Particularly when you're out there and you, there's no land and it's just spectacular. Um, so bringing people who down to the waterfront so it's access for everyone I think is really really important and it's really really healthy um, and you know a small portion of the people that you take out will be like this is for me right you know maybe I'm gonna be a sailor maybe I can stand up paddleboard but I can recreate and I can be out on the water and you know make sure that I'm giving back and, and you know taking something um, away every time you come into a marine environment 
and my passion for this project was started just a little tiny anecdote. I was out with um, the fam, my family, and we were going to a little beach over in um, Sunset Cliffs. So you were out on a boat? Yeah, just okay. on a little so boat. Having a family fun day Family fun water. day, you could only get to this boat, uh, beach by boat. Sure. And we pulled through the kelp beds, and you know, I'm looking at the beach, there's not a soul on it, there's not a footprint, but there's plastic as far as you can no. see. So we are sort this of- right here in Southern California. Right here in Southern California. Um, and so instead of playing and swimming that day, we cleaned up the beach. Um, and we're gonna go back this summer just to see what um, it's collecting out there. I'm sure it will be the same. Um, but you know, that's that whole thought though, that you know, we're gonna take and take that trash away and do something every time you know, we're at the waterfront to, to make it better for the next people who come behind us, right? So for those of us who aren't boaters that get a chance to go out on boats and be a part of the water world, what Kate and I are talking about is we really, really like to get out there and enjoy this time with our family and friends and loved ones. And a lot of times we do have a really big advantage where we can get out on a boat and go to places where other people aren't and we can have our own serenity with Mother Nature. But you're talking about not a beach where you see thousands of vacation goers going to visit the sand where there's a, a huge multi-thousand car parking lot right. in front of it. You're talking about a secluded beach. I'm talking about a beach you can only get to by boat off Sunset Cliffs. And yet there was still trash out of this trash place and a place humans can't even walk to. Yeah. yeah. So it just goes to show that it's cycling, it's out there, you know, the technology even this week that I've seen in the press with, um, you know, some new biggest picture cleanup projects um, for the, the plastic ocean problem is, is wonderful, but we all have to do our little bit, you know, and I think that it starts with that foundation of what you're doing with the, you know, banning straws and, you know, that little small piece. Um, I applaud San Diego and California for being so progressive. Um, we here at the marina, I don't know if you've noticed, but even our coffee station, we don't use the single plastic um, no, I love it. creamers anymore. Yeah, 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 Everything's yeah, yeah, paper. paper cups, no we reason. use the big refrigerated creamers because yep. we want people to come and enjoy our coffee, but I want to have a click conscience about sure. what I'm doing every day, right? <laughs> so it's that, that little piece. Um, and you know, just to, to speak to your point, recreating and, and being on the water and, and having you know that family memories and all that that fun experience is supposed to be wholesome and good and and we'll get there again when we're taking exactly. this stuff out right and we won't have to clean it up it'll just be out there. i love that you're focusing completely on the positive one of the things we like to go over a lot in our interviews with experts say you know one being what you do with yourself today and uh in our podcast it is two things that are really important to us and, and that's we don't want to focus on the fact that oh humans are damaged in the ocean and and, and there's pollutants out there and humans are this parasite on the, the world. We like to talk about the two things that are the most important thing I think all humans should remember, and that's that human beings are freaking awesome. We've created all kinds of amazing stuff. If you go on YouTube and just type in words like humans are epic and humans are awesome, you see some of the coolest crazy videos that you would never even think that we could do, and the ocean is so <laughs> awesome. Like, right. And it all ties back in, and that's, I think, a big part of what we believe in, and I'm, you, you're aware of our circumnavigation campaign. Right. Sailing around a two-year campaign around the world beginning November 2018. A lot of it is not just to show you guys what trash is out there, but to show you how much fun and how much you can enjoy the ocean, how many beautiful sights and how many awesome things there are in nature. Because we kind of forget about that a lot of times when we're stuck in the, you know, the nine to five or sometimes, you know, the daily grind and the rat race. It's we true, this. it's true. I mean, sailing is the ultimate in sustainability, right? <laughs> you're is. out there, okay, so you might have an engine. We tend not to put it on, right? But <laughs> you know, it's what? always good to have one. But you're out there with sails, you're making your own water, you are your own little island. And so, um, you know, it's great to pull that full circle back, right? The ultimate in sustainability is moving by, um, by, by air, so moving a boat along. Uh, wind, when it's a beautiful thing, Which you know, generate your power. Amazing. And I'm sure you're gonna have, you know, the so when I was cruising, the solar panels were giant, heavy things. I'm sure they're super lightweight now, but I'm sure, you know, the boat will be outfitted in every way as, as sustainable as possible, right? Exactly. You're gonna be out there for two years. You're gonna be able to make your own power and, um, we have you know, solar generate. panels all over the top of the vessel Excellent. already. We just put a brand new battery bank a couple of days ago. Good, good. Yeah, so, do you have a little wind generator as well? Uh, we're not doing wind generation mainly because wind doesn't provide as much as solar in the way of a, a constant power source. So we have a huge bank that we just put in a couple of days ago. Uh, Mike, Captain Mike and Captain Jeff came up and helped me out on the boat and we installed a huge house bank. So we've got brand new batteries all throughout and our, we've got a brand new computer for our solar power. So we are actually, like you just said, 
we're on like our own little island. We're off the grid. Literally it. off the grid. We're on our own electric grid out there. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm so excited for you guys. Uh, you're you. going to keep us posted, right? The whole way so we can watch you and live vicariously oh, gosh. through your channel. We're going to keep you guys updated the entire time. It's actually really cool to be doing the project we're doing. None of us really realize that you guys are so big into the Seabin project. We've always admired it and thought it was cool. But not even having realized before we launched this campaign and told the world, you know, brand launch party, we're going to go sail around the world and teach people about what's out there. We didn't realize how much of a symbiosis there was with our organization, Seas Life, and with Safe Harbors Marinas, and that you guys care about keeping the water clean. Oh, yeah. Look, every single day, it's paramount. It's, you know, to make sure that the water is cleaner than the, we found it. So we're, we're investing in technology, we're researching technology, we're supporting new technology. Um, you know, and we're, we're leading, leading the way here in California with uh, um, you know, some of the new biocide bottom paints and things that our boaters are testing. You know, we're trying to roll out that for everybody. Paperless with our accounting system, so you know, we're not having to print rings of paper. Um, having people's accounts all set up in a cloud. You know, app technology, all sorts of great stuff that we're working Going digital, out. we have less papers to sort through and less environmental waste. Exactly. It's exciting, Which is isn't pretty it? freaking awesome. So just to key our guests in a little bit who are watching at home, and you know, a lot of these people don't live on the water. They don't have the, the awesome advantage in life we have. They can be out on the water every day. I want to talk a little bit about what they can do at home that, that maybe people that don't work for a large corporation that owns marinas where they can put in, you know, sea bins that, that pull the, the pollutants from the sea. What can people do at home? Um, what are one or two things that you would say that daily life changes? You mentioned the straws in the elementary schools. It sounds like elementary kids. school kids are teaching their parents not they to use straws. They are. Elementary school kids are awesome. Um, so number one, I think you can just reconsider the straw, right? Do you really need one? Um, and then... I don't like sucking. I love it that way. Not suck. <laughs> no, just straws, right? Um, and, and the little thing with the grocery bags as well, if your area or your state or your county has not um, rolled out a, a, a plastic band bag, speak to your local city and see what you can do to start a movement. That's It's, it's remarkable. As I'd said, you know, in six months, we watched so much plastic being pulled out of the trash can to none. I mean, sure. it's it's right there, instant proof. Um, and then it's really, really simple. Wash your clothes in cold water. Don't use as much energy. It's very simple. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, so simply using things. a cold cycle instead cold of a hot cycle. Cold cycle instead of a hot cycle, yes. And since, since there are a lot of counties out there, and the majority of the world, you know, I could easily say, is still using a lot of single-use plastics and even these plastic bags. Now, if your county hasn't taken those away or said that that's something we don't want in our environment, there is something more we can do. You can kind of force the hand of your county, even without going to legislation, and that's through demand. And Kate, what's what? going to happen if people stop taking the bag or start using reusable grocery bags at their local grocery store? Are they going to keep stocking as many? No, they're bags? not. Exactly. And we saw even prior to the plastic band bag, um, I, I saw people always request paper. So paper is biodegradable, it acts as an excellent recycling bin. So even if you're, just request paper every time. Super little, little thing. Um, small change. Small change. You know, and these aren't life changes. You know, we don't, I don't really even notice. Wait, you mean we can live without these can little plastic imagine? bags and straws? I mean, Are you sure? It challenged me to remember to have grocery bags in my car at <laughs> all times, but you know, I got over that, it's my own challenge. But um, yeah, the little things like that, I think, um, and, and give it to the kids. You know, I think we underestimate just how smart our little kids are, and you know that they um, they see things really clearly. And you know, they inherited this challenge we have um, with sustainability, and I think they're going to be the ones who will help dig us out. But um, you know, engaging them, getting them down. I'd love to get the Silvergate kids down to celebrate your boat and what you're doing. We'd love one to get day. them on board and so teach them about what we're doing. Um, here at Cabrillo, we do a couple events with some inner city kids who may live maybe two miles away from the bay, but they've never been out on the bay. So we try and give them the experience that this is your bay too. You know, That's let's awesome own this. Yeah, we love that program. That brings it here. We were actually lucky enough, and you know, we've always had support from this marina. We took out a group of orphans. Uh, a friend of mine owns a company that, uh, an organization, they teach orphans how to surf so they have an extra avenue in life they can go you have a stress reducer and connect with the ocean and we actually took a bunch of them out on the boats and you mentioned the inner city kids I, I thought it was really interesting 
So we've taken myriads of different people, like tons of different groups out. These kids were some of the most appreciative kids I've ever, and these kids grew up in rough lives. I, you know, it makes me fortunate to have had the upbringing I had. You know, not everyone gets that awesome opportunity, and these kids were so appreciative. Since then, those kids have kept in touch with us, they've written us, they reach out to us every now and then, ask how we're doing, and even years later, will thank us for that day on the bank. Oh, it's so great. And so now that there's that connection to the water, you know, so I, I think all of us, even if you don't live near the ocean, that it's your right to be connected to it um, and vacate by it and recreate by it and, and you know just do the little things that you can because it's all upstream, right? Everything that is, is upstream ends up in our, in our waterways. And even so, if you're upstream, it's still going somewhere, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So it's just a little mindfulness and, and, it's, and it's really very simple. That's my three recommended. Awesome. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. I'm Captain Kyle here, interviewing with Kate from Safe Harbors Marinas, and uh, we really appreciate your time, Kate. Thanks so much for chatting us, and thank you so much for doing what you guys do and caring about the ocean. Oh, we so appreciate what you guys are doing, too. Yay! Yeah. It's cool to work with fun people who are passionate about the same thing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. awesome. I think that came out great. Um, you got most of it on all three? I made it all work. Yay! <laughs> 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 the camera's over here. Excellent. Thank you so much.